Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's going on? Okay, here, let me go ahead and get the ball rolling here. Um, I'm All Captain right. Caveman from Reach Down Radio's Metal in the Morning, and you are... Cool. Can you introduce yourself, sir? Yeah, I am Adam Newell, the Chicago bootlegger, Scattered Hamlet. Oh, right on, player. right on, right on. I love you guys' music. I've been playing it on my radio station. Oh, fuck, yeah, cool. <laughs> okay, I want to uh, kind of get right to it here. Um, you guys have been described, it says, Imagine Stone Cold Steve Austin with his partners Bo and Luke Duke in a parking lot brawl on a Saturday night set to music. <laughs> Can you kind of describe that? Uh, how, how accurate is that? It's, it's pretty accurate, you know. It's, it's basically, you know, we're just, we're just no bullshit, you know. We, we're straight to the point. We have a really good time when we perform live. Um, you know, uh, we're big wrestling fans. We're, we're uh, you know, we, we love the heavy shit. We love heavy music. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's kind of, we, we bring it. And, you know, when we, when we take the stage, I mean, that's, that's our fucking stage. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's good music. Yeah, if you want to whoop someone's ass, you know, you can put on some scattered hamlet. It'll be a great soundtrack. <laughs> Yeah, I've listened to that Dixie Metal. It seems like some good drinking ass whooping music. Oh yeah. <laughs> What's the kind of the craziest thing has ever happened while you guys were on stage that you can remember? Um, it was funny. I was thinking about this earlier. I mean, there's there's a lot of. Them. <laughs> uh, I I um I don't know about the craziest. We've had we've had we used to uh, tour around with the hype man. Um, we called him our hillbilly flavor flag, <laughs> and uh, I remember one show we did at uh, Aftershock in Kansas City, and um, we did like an hour set, and, which is typically unusual. You know, usually we do uh, forty-five minute sets, you know, but uh, this one we we added that extra fifteen minutes, and uh, um, you know, we've been known to to kick back a fifth or two of old pro on stage, oh, and. Uh, but, oh yeah, by the end of this set um, in Kansas City, uh, our hype man was passed out on stage. He was all rowdy before, and then <laughs> 45 minutes in, and he's laid out on the stage, drunk as shit, passed out. <laughs> um, yeah, we, uh, we, we, uh, we perform outside gigs. Um, me and Joe will uh, use our hillbilly pyrotechnics. And basically what we'll do is we'll get some... Uh, you know, just taste the smoke bombs on the guitar, yeah. and uh, makes a really cool fucking Ace Freely effect. Oh, um, <laughs> so we'll, we'll do some of that shit. But you know, we have fun on stage. You know, we bring uh, we bring some beer kegs up there. Um, always have sometimes moonshine, some whiskey. We almost killed a kid in West Virginia for moonshine. <laughs> That's cool. Let him drink a yeah, little too much, huh? Well, yeah, we uh, we don't do it no more, but we used to pass moonshine out to the crowd, and um, and uh, yeah, it almost killed someone, so we can't really do it no more. Yeah. But uh, this kid, yeah, front row man, he took took the moonshine. Uh, he must have thought it was fake or something, because he took it back and he took like half the jar back, and uh, uh, yeah, he was outside. And, uh, I think. Uh, He's passed out puking, and it was came all that. But yeah, we can't do that shit no more. Well, we said he learned his lesson the hard way. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm kind of afraid. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid for Houston. I got done talking to uh, you guys. Are going to be playing with uh, Squid Hammer Metal, and uh, yeah. they kind of like to blow shit up too. I think it's going to be a pretty interesting show. I'm I'm very excited about this show. <laughs> <laughs> hey, do you? Does everybody in the band ride? Or you got? I mean, do you guys all? Ride together on your um, on uh, scooters, or you just um, Joe. I know uh, our singer rides. Uh, Adam Joe rides, um, but the rest of us, um, you know, I, I'm up in the northeast up here, and I used to uh, live in Illinois. If I was still there, I'd probably be riding. But up here, I, I don't trust these fucking drivers around here, man. <laughs> uh, kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean. There, huh? Oh yeah, they they they're fucking terrible drivers. I I don't I don't trust them. But you know, whenever I'm I'm in Illinois, you know, I'll I'll ride a little bit. Uh, I uh we uh all our fans though, you know, the Hell Riders. I mean, they're they're all they're all riders, and and I I um 
tool manager at Biker Dave, you know, he he comes in, he, he's usually there at every show with us, and sometimes he'll, uh, he'll ride to the show, but, um, yeah, but no, our, our singer's like the only one that, that rides regularly, but, uh, um, yeah, like I said, if I was in Illinois, man, I'd definitely do that more, but up here, fuck that, these people <laughs> get guys with the shit. <laughs> So what what kind of influenced you to become a musician? I mean, were you always um, into music as a little kid, or did you see someone on stage? Or? Yeah, I. It's. Um, when I was younger, I was, I was. What happened for me was I was coming home from baseball practice one time, and uh, I that was all in the sports, you know, baseball, basketball, football, and all that. But um, I came home from uh, baseball practice. I, I must have been like 12 or 13. Uh, and I uh, walked through the door, and my dad's sitting at the living room with a guitar. And uh, I don't know, something just clicked. And uh, I just went straight, you know, made a beeline towards my dad. And he's playing this thing, and, and he hands it to me. And once that thing kind of, you know, got in my hands, it, uh, something just clicked. Yeah. I can't really describe it, but um, yeah, I ended up sleeping with the thing that night, and I really have it. And I've been playing every day since, but um, you know, kind of before that, like music was always around in my household. My dad was really big uh, in the in the hard rock and metal, and um, you know, I, we used to wake up every morning for school. My dad blasting, you know, Zeppelin or Sabbath or you know, so. I think he was secretly embedding it, it to me, but um, yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah. When I when I when I got my hands on the guitar, it was like, all right, this is this is what I'm gonna do. <laughs> awesome, man. So your dad yeah. kind of had a little bit of a, his musical style and interest kind of played a part in you becoming a rock musician. So, yeah, my dad and and I got uh, two older brothers, and um, you know they were always blasting, um, you know. Uh, uh, like typo negative and uh, Guns N' Roses, the Pantera, shit like that, and uh, um, you know they they had uh, a big influence on on the music that I was getting into. I used to steal their CDs all the time as a kid, and, you know, go in my room and <laughs> lock the door and fucking you know play a typo negative Pantera all the time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this new album. Uh I've, I've got the single, the was it Swamp Rebel Machine? Yeah. What what kind of you know what kind of influences the the, the Dixie metal? I mean, is, are you all kind of because you're from up north? Is everybody else from the south, and it's kind of a Dixie thing, or do you guys? I mean, did you all kind of come together? And how, have you been in the band what? the whole time? Or? Well, Scatter Hamlet was around um, before I joined, but like this unit, we've been together for about four years now and uh, you can really hear it on on the album yeah uh you know skeleton dixie was is a great album you know i, I dig it but um this one that you know it has all of our inputs on it and um you know we we did all of us have uh some some writing on the record where skeleton dixie a lot of it was uh adam joe okay and uh but uh, yeah, I mean, we've been like I said, we've been touring, and we've been this unit has been together for for four plus years. And uh, when we got we started writing this album, I mean, it, it just it was just clicking. And uh, um, Swamp Bubble Machine, that single, uh, that was a riff that I brought in. I I really am into uh, blues music, old Delta blues, um, Robert Johnson, Sun House, Charlie Patton, all that. And um, you will hear a lot of that influence on this whole record, but you definitely hear it on Swamp Rebel. Yeah, um, I was listening to that, and I played it. There's a band called 100 Watt Vipers that I play every once in a while. They're like a heavier blues band. They play some old style blues, but a heavier country sound. And uh, you, you can yeah. hear, you can hear that in the Swamp Rebel Machine. It's kind of a you know, it's a blues, it's a metal, it's a rock. It's it's got a little bit of everything in it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And that's you know, um, I'm a I'm from just a little outside of Chicago. Uh, that's where I grew up, and uh, I mean that b blues was everywhere. You know, when I was growing up, and uh, um, you know, he's, uh, when I first started playing guitar, I mean, that guitar came with 
uh, copy of the movie Crossroads. <laughs> and so, uh, once I, you know, got into that, it, it, and that just, ever since I watched that movie and, and, you know, I got really into it. And then all the players that I, I uh, started getting into, you know, I was really in the, I'm still, like, I'm, Jimi Hendrix is the fucking shit. Yeah. I don't care. If anyone said that's my dude. But, um, uh, go back to who his influence are, you know, and you see, like, Chuck Berry and then who his influence are. And, you know, you just go, it all goes back to those Delta Breeze players. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah, I really, really fucking enjoy it. Well, cool. I just want to thank you for taking the time. I know everything's kind of, everybody's got their lives in a second, but you took time to do, it, uh, do an interview for us. Um, why don't you tell us about the, the Houston show uh, with the date and the club and everything, and then we'll let you have your afternoon yeah. to drink some beer. Absolutely, man. No, I, I don't, we're all very excited to be back there. Last time we played there, it was a fucking blast. Um, uh, we're coming back. We're coming back. CD release show. We'll have Swamp Rebel Machine um, with us. We'll uh, be performing a lot of new songs, um, and uh, you know it's it, it's going to be a very fun fucking night. I know we're going to get rowdy as shit, and I know Split Hammer Boys is going to get rowdy. And um, yeah, yeah, come on to the show. It's it's going to be a hell of a time. Cool, man. It's what's that on November sixth at BFE, right? Yep, yep, the BFC Rock Club. All right, man. Well, hey, uh, you guys have a great afternoon, or you have a great afternoon. And uh, we'll see you at the show, man. All right, brother. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, man. All right. Yep, later. Y'all just a bunch of white trash. The Divide Right Live, Mighty Fish Entertainment event.